Hello everyone, my name is Halsey. Welcome to another International Sunday School lesson where we give an overview of the lessons based on the standard lesson commentary. Don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe, or even to leave a comment. The theme for this quarter is hope in the Lord. This is the fourth lesson in unit one of our summer quarter. All the lessons in June has been focusing on experiencing hope. Bible, a scripture for today, Sunday, June 23rd, is taken from Hebrews chapter 6, verses 9 through verses 20. Lesson title is Full Assurance. Before we go into our lesson, we will have prayer, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness and your tender mercies to us. Now, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to all of your promises. They are all yea and amen. And we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that your word stands sure. It is already settled in heaven. And we say thank you. Now, Lord, bless. Bless us. Bless every person that watches and listens. Continue, Lord, to give strength, and we say thank you. Bless every teacher, give understanding, give strength, give encouragement, and we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all of your many blessings to, to us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. This lesson is outlined, and it is divided into two sections. Section one will deals with promise made, and that's uh, verses 9 through verse 12. Section 2 will deal with promise fulfilled, and that's verses 13 through verses 20. Aim for this lesson is that we list elements of the diligence Christians are to practice, and that we explain the meaning and significance of Jesus as forerunner and high priest forever. And that we write a prayer of thanks for God's keeping of his promises. Before we go into our printed text, uh, we will just add a little bit of background. So uh, back in chapter 5, the writer of this uh, book, he accused his readers of being spiritually immature. Despite uh, being a Christian for a long time, uh, many of them were still having hang-ups on simple concepts. And this kind of hang-up, it causes uh, the writer here to send forth warnings. The writer here, he, he criticized them for their immaturity. Uh, some of them apparently have been uh, teaching others, but they themselves have not applied even the basic uh, principle to their own lives. They were reluctant to move beyond even the basic old traditions that were established by their uh, ancestors. And because of that, they would not be able to understand the high priest's role of Jesus Christ unless they moved away from traditions and obey the word of God and obey who Jesus is, understand who he is, that he is our high priest, commit to Christ and move away from people who have other ideas, they will not understand the role of of Jesus Christ as high priest and same can be said where we are today unless we receive Jesus Christ as Lord we will not understand his role of being our Lord and Savior this right here was not just for them this is for us too and that's where we are today Jesus Jesus is, was not just a good teacher or a good master no Jesus Christ is Lord God in flesh he is our Lord and he is our Savior and he is our King. He is our High Priest. He, God gave Jesus all power. Jesus is everything to us. He is God in flesh. Jesus is the visible of the invisible God. 
Unless any of us understand that, we will not understand that he is our Lord and Savior. We will now go to section 1 and it will deals with promise made. And that's verse 9 through verses 12. Reading from the King James Version. But, beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompanied salvation, though we thus speak. And we see here how uh, this writer was uh, calling his listener to a spiritual growth, to a higher, to come up, come up. Uh, if we look back in chapter 5 and verse 12, it says, You have been Christians a long time now, and you are to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things as a beginner must learn about the scriptures. You are like babies. You drink only milk and cannot eat solid food. And a person who is living on milk isn't very far along in the Christian life and doesn't know much about doing what is right. 14. Solid food is for those who are mature, who have trained themselves to recognize the difference between right and wrong and then to do what is right. And the word mature, it carries the idea of being fully developed, fully grown, being advanced, being growing, growth, not sit, sitting in the same spot as when one first started. Our Christian uh, journey, our Christian faith, it involves growth. I know scripture says to come as we are, but after a while, we have to get past coming as we are. We come as we are and we should be at some point start growing away from the things that we used to do. We should at some point start growing into what is right. If we are sincerely in this journey, something should be transpiring something should be transforming something should be changing in us to discern right from wrong and to lose that desire of doing wrong and start doing what is right the, if the holy spirit is in us he is going to send that spirit of conviction on us if we're truly connected to him to show us what is right from what is wrong. After a while, something has to shift. I believe that's what the writer here is saying. We don't grow backwards. We grow forward and we change. And here uh, the writer uh, said, even though we're talking like this, we really don't believe that th this applies to you. So they're still getting the benefit of the doubt that we were, we're convinced and we have confidence that you are meant for better things, things that comes with salvation. We're meant for better things. Our journey, our faith journey has so much involved in it. And God, uh, he wants us to not just live this journey for ourselves. We are to live it in the light of others. Others need to come and they shall see his good work and glorify the Father which are in heaven. This is a dark, dying world that need to see the light. And Jesus left us here on earth in this journey to be a light. We're not to sit in the same spot from day one and not grow so somebody could see something. We are to grow and go and flow in the hearts of hurting people. Back to the lesson, verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed towards his name, in that he have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we see here, uh, after uh, criticizing those who were lazy in their approach to their Christian faith, how the writer now moves to a deeper idea. And uh, he goes from confidence to encouragements the writer he was harsh 
but also with confidence that his readers uh, would continue on their path and continue to serve the Lord with diligence. And we can see here apparently how much uh, some of these uh, Christians were struggling who uh, badly needed to hear uh, these encouraging words after what was said between uh, verse 4 and verse 8. And this here again, this right here is true for us today. This is also true for us. When we start uh, being lazy and laid back, we will start taking the wrong turn. And when that happens, not only do uh, we need to get warning of what's up ahead, we also need that encouragement to pull us back, to bring us back to where we need needs to be in the Lord. Because, you know, discouragement will come. It, it's very easy to get discouraged. And when that happens, it may sometimes cause us to think that the Lord has forgotten us. But we see here, how the writer said, for God is not unrighteous. He never forgets. He does not forget what we're doing for his kingdom. He never forgets or overlooks our hard work for him. And we may not be uh, receiving reward right away, but our main focus should be that the Lord sees and he knows what we're doing and he knows that we're doing it sincerely from our hearts because that's where he looks. And that is why we have to know him for ourselves so that when we uh, face these uh, places of discouragement and frustration, we know that the Lord is with us no matter what. And that uh, we should allow his love for us and uh, the privilege that we have in having intimate knowledge of who he is by faith in Jesus Christ, we should allow that to propel us and to help us when we face uh, disappointments and, and when we face rejections and when we face all the other frustration that comes along this journey. We should always hold fast to what we know of the Lord, that he loves us and that he sees what we're doing for the kingdom. Verse 11, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Verse 12, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And we see several things taking place uh, right here in these verses. Uh, we see how uh, the writer, he desired for these Christians that his desire was for them to be diligent, having the same diligence. And the word diligence, it carries that idea of being persistent, be steadfast, be unmovable, be always about uh, the work of the Lord, be unchangeable don't change don't quit don't turn back don't look back don't don't turn away from press forward be diligent and diligence will always keep hope alive you know hope hope keeps us as christian it keeps us from becoming lazy or feeling bored or turning away and think about it this way think about an athlete and how hard they have to train. And, and when they train hard, how well they perform. Why? Because up ahead, there's a goal up ahead for them. They're doing it with a goal in mind, an end goal in mind. They're remembering what lies ahead, the reward that is ahead of them. And we see that better in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14, where it says, Press towards the mark for the price of the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. Did you hear that? We have a higher calling. Jesus has uh, left us here to, to come up. He, he has given us an assignment and a part of our assignment is that higher calling that is in front of us that we have to press forward to come up. That is why we have to continue to grow. 
We can't remain the same as we are when we first started. At some point, again, we have to come up. And when we have that in mind, when we have that higher call in mind, when we put Jesus in front of us as our example, he's our high priest, he's our teacher, he's our comforter, he's our everything. When we have him in front of us, there will be that place of encouragement that we can always go to. And he will help us to guard our minds and it will help us to boost our confidence in what we're doing for him. Especially in this world, in this dark and dying world where there is all these attack against our Christian faith. When we know what's involved and what is in store for us up ahead, it will help us to move forward and press forward and be persistent and be diligent in what we're doing for the kingdom. Back to the lesson, we will now go to section two and it will deals with promise fulfilled. And that's verses 13 through verses 20. Verse 13, for when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. 14 saying, surely bless I will bless thee. And multiplying, I will multiply thee. You see here uh, how a God uh, made a promise and how certain this promise uh, is. He swore in his own name. He used his, him, his own self to secure and guarantee this promise. That's the secure, security and the certainty of this promise. And uh, this is that covenant uh, promises that God uh, confirmed uh, back in Genesis chapter 22 and verse, uh, starting at verse 15, and it says, and the, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, 16, and said, by myself have I sworn, says the Lord, for because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, 17, that in blessing I will bless you and in multiplying I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the sea shore and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. 18, and in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Did you hear that? This is the same blessing that all of us are benefit from. This is the seed of Abraham, Jesus Christ, who came and died for this dark and dying world. This is the certainty, the assurance that we have in our Christian faith to hold on to. God is faithful to his promise. He promised Abraham and we saw all of this fulfilled in Jesus Christ. That is why he is our high priest in front of us. To let us know that God did not forget what he promised Abraham. And he's certainly not going to forget what we're doing for him. This should encourage us. Back to the lesson. Verse 15. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Abraham patiently endured and after that he obtained the promise abraham waited patiently it was about 25 years from the time god had promised him a son which is in genesis 12 and 7 uh, uh to give him a son uh, isaac about 25 years before that promise ever came to pass. But what did Abraham do in the meantime? Uh-huh. He waited patiently. The word patient, it involves a great sense of tolerance. It involves a great sense of suffering without getting upset or getting angry or giving up. 
It involves calmness. It involves forbearance. It involves self-restraint. Patience. He waited patiently for God to fulfill his promise to him. 25 years waiting patiently. And Abraham becomes an example for us. Because you know what? We too, when we face trials and temptations and storms, and oftentimes they are intense, and they're so intense, they seem to last forever, for eternity. But we see right here a place where we can come to for encouragement. Abraham, he waited patiently. And these are testimonies right here of mature Christians. They, again, they should be able to encourage us to wait for God to act in what? Uh-huh. His timing. Even uh, sometimes when our needs seems to be so great and too great to await on the Lord and to wait any longer, we see right here the only way to receive it is to wait for it. Back to the lesson, verse 16. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. And when we, when we think about uh, oath and when we take an uh, oath and how uh, it, it, it's calling on someone that is greater than ourselves to hold them uh, to what they said. Because we're all frail human beings and we don't trust one another, we, we, we want that other person to see that we're telling the truth, so to speak, or we're sincere in what we're saying. So we will call on the Lord for, for an example that, and says, well, God is my witness. So we're calling on someone that is greater. We, we invite uh, the Lord to be our witness of our claim of truth. And in that swearing or in that taking of oath, uh, the, goal, the goal is to settle that dispute. The oath, uh, it will serve as a confirmation of what has been said and is an end to that dispute. Verse 17, we're in God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirm it by an oath, verse 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. And we see several things taking place here uh, in these uh, verses right here. And one of them is immutable. The word immutable, it carries the idea of something unchangeable. Can't change. Can't change. Something fixed. It's set. It's permanent. That is God's promise to us. It's fixed. It's set. It's permanent. It's in place permanently. And these two things that are unchangeable are God's promises and his oath. God, his, 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 he embodies all truth. And so therefore, because he embodies all truth, therefore he cannot lie. Because God is truth, we can trust him. We can be secure in his promises. We don't need to wonder if he will change his plans or not. No, no, we don't have to wonder. His plans is set and it will never uh, change because he can't lie. And uh, we see that in Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 where it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. God is not a man like us who are weak, frail, and born in sin and shape and iniquity and lie here and there. 
because we're 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 limited and and we're not in a perfect body yet no god is all truth and he cannot lie so therefore we can trust him it's not like uh how we can't trust one another at times we can trust the lord all of his words are yea and amen it is so it is settled in heaven that's it back to the lesson and that is why we should take take our hope seriously and that's that's why we should make sure that our hope is secure and it is unmovable and is it, and it is anchored in the lord that should be our mindset that that is how we should be thinking that is a part of our growth so as a man think it so is he when we think about the lord and who he is and and what he embodies that he embodies all truth that will help us to grow past the baby drinking milk stage and grow into mature christian all of this right here this truth about whom god is it should give us the encouragement that we need the ensure, the assurance that we need and the confidence that we need to hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering knowing that this faithful god that we serve is faithful who have promise verse 19 which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast and which enter it into that within the veil 20 whether the forerunner is for us entered even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek and again we see how the confidence where it should be rooted it should be rooted in God's trustworthiness this confidence it it would serve like a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls we live out of our souls that's where we live the mind the will and emotions that's where it it all happens we need to have a strong anchor there and and and, and also where does satan come to bother us uh-huh he bothers us in our minds that's where he come to plant seeds of doubts and fear and lies he comes with all his lies he comes to our minds and this is why right here is very important we have to make sure that our jesus christ is the anchor of our souls and when we put a jesus christ as the anchor of our souls it will lead us through the curtain of heaven into god's inner sanctuary it will make us into that sacred place that's where it will take us and that's where we need to be to grow in the things of the lord and jesus again is our example he has already gone there for us he has become our eternal high priest in the line of melchizedek and when we think back on the temple and and the holy place and the separation from the ho- most holy place and that curtain that hang across at uh, the entrance from the holy place to the most holy place those were the two innermost uh, rooms of the temple and this curtain that was hanging there it it prov- it was a separation it prevented anyone from entering in from gazing into or even getting a glimpse of that inner most holy place only the high priest could enter into that most holy place the high priest could enter there only once a year to stand in God's presence and atone for the sins of the entire nation but we see here thank you Jesus we see here that Jesus Christ is in. this is why uh, we must put all our trust in Jesus Christ because he is our high priest if we go back to even chapter 4 Hebrews chapter 4 and verse uh 14 it says this is why we have a great high priest who has gone to heaven Jesus the son of God let 
us cling to him and never stop trusting him. 15. This high priest of ours understand our weaknesses, for he face all the same temptations we do, yet he did not sin. So, let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it. Did you hear that? We will find God's grace and mercy when we need it. You know, this journey is filled with all kinds of temptation. And when we know that Jesus Christ is in front of us on our side representing us in front of a holy God. Jesus, he mediates between God and us. Again, as our representative, he intercedes on our behalf in front of a holy God. He assures us of God's forgiveness. Unlike the high priest who could only go uh, to God once a year, Jesus is always at God's right hand interceding for us. He is always available to hear us when we pray. And so as we close our lesson, what are some things that we can take away? Well, for one, we see maturity. We learn that we are to be uh, growing in our faith. We are to mature in our faith, become more diligence, become more persistent, being more steadfast, and be more unmovable about the things of the Lord. We also uh, see how uh, God's promises is immutable, where it carries the idea of being unchangeable. We see how uh, the, the promise and the hope that we have in the Lord, how it is anchored in Jesus Christ. It is securely in place. How would we describe our faith to an unbeliever? Well, for one, we see here how we can, by our lifestyle, live a life of anchored hope, meaning walk in the Spirit and not allow our flesh to tempt us to do what we're not supposed to do. This world needs to see an example of this faith that we're claiming in action. We are to put our faith in action. And that is why we need to grow. We can't grow if we don't know what to grow in. This is why we need to study God's word for ourselves, learn it for ourselves, pray and ask him to give us discernment of what we're hearing, if we're hearing the right thing, if it's aligned with his truth, so we can grow in his truth, not only for ourselves, but for those that we are connected to. Again, every one of us, we have what is called a circle that we're connected to. And somebody in that circle need to hear or see something about this Jesus that we're talking about. And we are to live a life that is somebody around us can see that, it, that our hope is anchored in Jesus Christ. So they too can cry out and say, what must we do to be saved? And so as we go through this week, let us have an aim. Let us have an aim to be that light that Jesus Christ has called us to be, to be that guiding light to someone so they can call on the Lord Jesus for their salvation. And this will conclude this week's lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, Please give a thumbs up, share, like, subscribe, or even to leave a comment. But most importantly, remember, we are building the kingdom of God together, one lesson at a time. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.